Welcome to another episode of Journeys in Entrepreneurship. Today we have Kofo Akikube, who is a previous recipient of Faith Foundation's Model Entrepreneur Award. Kofo is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Secure ID. Secure ID is a MasterCard, Visa, and Verve certified smart card personalization bureau and digital technology company. She also founded SID Digital Limited, a digital solutions company that focuses on digital identity, digital payment, and automated fare collection systems, as well as Transport Payment Solutions Limited, which is focused on solutions for transport projects across various transport systems. Interviewing her is the 2020 Fake Model Entrepreneur Award recipient, Taya Uviosu. Tayo is the founder and group CEO of Paga. Paga is a mobile payment company building an ecosystem to enable people digitally send and receive money, as well as creating simple financial access for everyone. Join us as we listen to their journeys in entrepreneurship in the fintech space. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of uh, Journeys in Entrepreneurship brought to you by the Fate Foundation. My name is Tayo Vyosu. I'm the founder and CEO of Paga, and it's a real pleasure to be here today with Kofo Akinkube, who is the founder and CEO of Secure ID. Let's get into it. Hi, Kofo. Hi. Um, I've, I'm a big fan of yours, um, and I've been a big fan of yours um, well before I met you. Um, and I'm super excited to have this conversation with you. Um, today, we just want to have a casual discussion about your journey in entrepreneurship. Um, and, you know, I sent a tweet um just before uh the, earlier this week and i said you know i'm excited to speak to a trail trailblazer because i see <laughs> you that way um and i said this person started their, their first company in 1998 and just think about starting a business in nigeria in 1998 <laughs> yeah. right um and is the founder of two very successful technology companies mm -hmm. Um, so let us start from the beginning. Can you share with us a little bit about your early childhood, right? Um, and you know, where did you grow up? What was your family life like? Um, and just give us a, some insight into your background. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, um, number three of 10 children, 10 children, 10 children. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, um, so grew up in Lagos, mm. um, basically had most of my education in Lagos, had a yeah. bit abroad, mo mostly here. Yeah. Um, my, my dad was a stickler for getting good grades, mm. you know, and yeah. um, usually there's competition even between the siblings, sure. you know, who, who's going to get the first, who's going to get the yeah. second, you yeah. know, and so on. So I, I had that kind of, sort of background mm. and mindset. Yeah. Um, but skip forward, yeah. you know, ended up in banking in yeah. my career. That, that was my first career. Yeah. And um, from banking, started my entrepreneurial journey. Got it. But if I had to rewind a bit, yeah. um, I did mathematics in school. Yeah. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to come back to the school. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want you to go too far because I, I really do want to understand your childhood because yeah. um, and, and being number three of 10, already tells us something, right? Because I have to imagine, um, I came from five, five kids. Oh. So I can only imagine the fight wanting your own attention yeah. right, among, among <laughs> 10 kids. But what activities did you enjoy as a child? Like, um, you know, sports, a okay. lot of sports, a lot of which, sports. Which sport yeah. were you really into? Squash. Okay. Yeah. Did, did a lot of squash, did a, did a bit of netball. Okay. Um, but um, squash and swimming. Were these things that your parents encourage you to go do or it, you on your own it was sort of... forced on us because okay. it was actually squash was actually meant to be a punishment um, <laughs> we went out partying when we weren't supposed to go sure. and so on and so forth so we snuck out of the house and yeah you know my dad was like okay you guys have nothing to do so i'm going to get you a squash coach and yeah. we're going to be going to your club all, every the, time, day, all right. the time and we ended up loving it Got and it. um when we then went went abroad, some of us were playing for the school, you okay, know, for squash. So oh, yeah, wow. so it's. Um, Do you still play today? I still play, oh, but great. not 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 as regular. <laughs> but I still do. And when you were a child, like, what did you think you'd want to do when you grow up? 
Like, do you remember? Um, I'm I'm not sure when I was a child, but I knew that when I grew up a little bit, mm -hmm. I'm just probably during my youth course surveys. Okay. Um, I'd always thought that I would be in an office, corporate mm -hmm. office, okay. working for a large organization Got it. and just g growing through the ranks and, you know, becoming yeah. an executive director, a very senior yeah. executive within that organization. Okay, so you, you thought just, you know, your quote unquote career, typical career path. Typically right? career path. Got it. Definitely Got it. not entrepreneurship. Got it. So, so these days, I mean, look, it's it's still very rare to find um, women in STEM, you know, in science, technology, um, entrepreneurship, and math. So I can only imagine what it was when you were growing up. And and as I was thinking about that, I wondered, you know, you mentioned mathematics. What led you to go study mathematics? Like, why why math? Um, you see, the the math story um, is actually, I would say, probably that as what has sort of largely shaped me mm. for what I am today. Tell us um, that, yeah. Because when I was in secondary school, like we used to call it in yeah. those days, um, I hated maths. Uh, Interesting. I, I actually hated maths. And, um, but something in me said, wait a minute, I've, I've got to conquer this fear. Mm. You know, it's, it can't be this bad. Mm. Anyway, eventually I, I did. Yeah. Um, and um, I had a stepbrother that really loved maths, mm. and he he took me through. So all okay. thanks to him. Interesting. And um, um, I loved maths, and I ended up doing ad maths. Okay. And I thought, wow. And I ended up do wanting to do more and more of it. Yeah. And so that's how come I, you know, sort of ended up in university studying mathematics. And when you were in university doing this, like, what did you think you would, you? You would, how do you think you would use it um, at the time? Yeah, so at that time, so of course I went in there. When I went into uni, uh, the first thing that struck me was um, we were only two women in class mm. out of all the people in class. Mm -hmm. So that was one. Yeah. The second one is I can remember walking into my the professor's office and he, he sort of looked at me and said, mm. you, yeah. Max, I said, well, we'll just give her now, a year. Now, this is a unilag. These are unilag. Okay, she'll, she'll be yeah. out. <laughs> we'll just give wow. her a year. Yeah. And, um, you know, so just two, two, two of us as women in yeah. the class. And um, so I had to prove a point. So yeah. I've always had to prove a point in everything, you sure, know. Sure. So and and, you know, and because I'm always in the minority, yeah. you know, um, one kind of stands out and yeah. wanting to make the best of it. Yeah. So I loved maths and I think most people that do maths, actually they do it because they love it. Mm. But one thing I knew I didn't want to do was to teach it at okay. a later stage. So to do a PhD yeah. and become yeah. a teacher. No, I thought no. Yeah. I thought I would use it and go into the corporate world, Got it. you know, and probably do an MBA, which I did mm -hmm. afterwards and, you know, go into the corporate world. So I yeah. never thought that I would actually end up Teaching, being yeah. a lecturer in maths. So this is this is very interesting because you you went after a subject that you initially did not like. Yeah. And the, I mean, where did that resilience come from? Come from? Like, I like asked to, myself to too. I'm, I'm really curious, like, <laughs> because and, it's uh, and and I'm really curious to get your view on it because I think that's something that I would imagine has served you very well on your journey as an entrepreneur. Yeah, right? yeah. So. definitely. Uh, I mean, when, when I talk about uncharted waters. Mm. Um, and sort of like overcoming fears. Yeah, yeah. Um, because the thing about entrepreneurs is that they've got to deal with a lot of fears. Mm. So I would say, yes, that served yeah. me well. Overcoming that fear yeah. actually sort of created that springboard or yeah. foundation in meeting anything along yeah. the way. And uh, talking about fear, I mean, it's something I've heard you talk about as I was preparing for this, I, I, I got that theme. And, and for all, you know, a lot of people watching us today um, are people who probably aspire to start their own businesses mm -hmm. um, and to do stuff. And so, you know, the question always is like, sort of, how do you overcome fear? Like, how do you take that step, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering how you think about that first step, right? How did you think about risk? How did you think about ambiguity? Right, in just in general, in terms of overcoming fear mm -hmm. of doing something. Well, as um, 
the thing is that it starts with very little steps. Okay. Um, um, mm. if, if there is something, if there is some fear that you overcame, yeah. um, you then use that as, um, as what, what do you call it? You, you then use that as a reference point. Sure. Whenever you meet obstacles mm. that, oh, I, I, I overcame that. Yeah, that yeah. So I can do this, mm. you know. Yeah. And, you know, as you do, as you take those little steps yeah. and take those little references, yeah. you know, confidence builds up. Sure. You know, and every time you meet those obstacles, yeah. you're, you're able to you're mm -hmm. able to overcome them. That's really cool. I like that. So it's, um, you know, think about it in smaller chunks, right? Mm -hmm. Take one, you know, take smaller steps. And as you overcome one, you know that, mm -hmm. hey, I can do it. I, mm -hmm. I can do it again. Love that. Um, so, so tell me about banking, because you went to become a banker. Mm -hmm. Was it just the thing to do because everybody was doing banking or was it something that you like really said, I, w I, I think I would love being a banker? Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure it was I love banking, okay. but at, at that time it was, that was a place to be. Mm -hmm. um, it, it had this very corporate yeah. demeanor about it. Yeah. And, um, you know, and having to work in one of the best banks yeah. at that time mm -hmm. was like, wow, yeah. you know. Um, so I went into it and I absolutely loved it because again, I was dealing with figures. Mm. So it was all about financial sure. analysis, sure. credit analysis sure. and so on. Yeah. So, so it, was, it, was, it was nice. So I ended up yeah. loving it yeah. for, for some time, for as long as I was there. <laughs> <laughs> and while you were there, like, did you have mentors that you looked up to or, and that you kept in touch with or? Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely, okay. absolutely. But then you left it. And this is, to me, was one of the best parts of me thinking about this. Like you, you didn't have anything you were, you just said, I'm done with this. Yeah. Tell us about that. Like, and tell us about that yeah. decision and that, and, and how did your family specifically like react to it? Mm -hmm. You know, um, at this point you're married, yeah. you have kids, right? So how did all of that, what was the conversation at the dinner table? <laughs> you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so like, um, yes, um, you know, one thing I always say, be, this personality and just being disciplined in everything that mm. you do obviously served me well whilst mm. I was in banking. Mm. You know? So you want to do something, you want to do it well. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know whether it's the mathematical background, sure. you know, because one plus Very one logical. must have an yeah. answer, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's, I've always been extremely focused. Yeah you know, wanting to do things well, yeah. okay, this is where I'm going yeah. and so on. So, um, but when I got married, um, I remember, I mean, even my husband knew that I was very, very career focused yeah. and he mm -hmm. sort of respected that That's path, mm -hmm. you know, and allowed me to be. Yeah. Um, but by the time I had my first child, okay, I could cope. But by the time I had the second, mm. I then thought, oh, wait a minute. I, I think I, I want to do school runs like mm. every other woman. You know, mm. I want to be able to take them to school, pick them up from school. And so and I, I, yeah. I, I need to spend more, more time, yeah. you know. And at that point of my career, I was already sort of on the way up, yeah. you know. And I thought, what am I going to do? But I had nothing. I, mm. I, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. But I just yeah. knew that it was time to leave, yeah. you know. And so I, I left without knowing what the next steps were yeah. going to be. Um, I don't know if that was a smart idea, but sure. uh, I'm also a very prayerful person. Mm. So a lot of times I pray about things and yeah. felt, feel that, OK, I think it's time to move, yeah. you know. So I felt that way. And um, how did your husband react though? Like, what was his? Um, luckily for yeah. me, he was. He was like, yeah, okay, that that's good if that's what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 good. And so, um, so I did leave and mm. had fun, you know, yeah. you know, doing all the school runs yeah. and baby runs and so on and so forth. But I did know at the back of my mind that no, I wasn't. I wasn't leaving to stay at home. Okay. I was leaving, yes, to spend more time with my girls, yeah. but also to find a path that would allow me to benefit the two, have a mm. challenging career, mm. and also be able to yeah. um, maintain the motherhood yeah. you know, um, aspect of it, the work-life balance. Yeah. And so that that's that's why I left, you know. But not there was no plan as to where where yeah. where was I going to go to. Now this is um, what year was this, by the way? 
like oops um 96 97 somewhere yeah, around there. Some, something like that yeah, yeah um and i'm just trying to think of where the world where the world was then and where <laughs> it is today right and as a leader today and i'm, I'm going to fast forward real quick and i'll come back but just staying on this theme of work-life balance, particularly for women, mm. right? Um, and well, not just women, but the men as well, right? Mm. Um, one family, one kids. How do you encourage that with your with your team, right? Um, to take that time off, right? Um, if they want to, um, and for it not to affect their career, because I think a lot of people. That's a big question that they ask, yeah. right? Whether it's the women or the men, it's like if I take that time off, it affects my progression in my career. How do you? Yeah. How do you? Not for yourself now, because you've, you've tackled it for yourself. Yeah. But for other people, how do you yeah. think about it? Well, one thing I do is, um, and I've I've had a few women, um, one, one or two women that had a very, uh, um, um, what would I say, promising career mm. within the company. Sure. And so when they came to me to say, I want to leave because my, my son is in America and mm. I want to go and stay with him, yeah. I would encourage it mm. and say, look, whenever you're ready to come back, yeah. we will take you back. Fantastic. You know, um, I remember another, another lady that came to me to say, my husband has been transferred to Port Harcourt mm. and I want to go and stay with him yeah. and so on and so on. So yeah. that, that would, I would encourage yeah. um, because if they felt that way at that time and because I think the family is also very important. Yeah. And, you know, when we're talking about success, we're talking about all around success, sure. you know, um, you really can't be successful in your career and not be successful mm. in the other areas. It's mm. all sort of together. connected together, yeah. you know, so it, it's an area that I would definitely yeah. encourage, yeah. you know, if the field feel that way. Um, even if it's to take some time off and then come back yeah. later, yes, it's something that we would definitely encourage. That's awesome. We've That's had awesome. some people yeah. take a break and they're still being paid the salary, sure. but they're taking that break. Sure. You know. Um, yeah. No, that's great. And um, staying on this theme a little bit, I mean, you started your first company in 1998, as we said before. Mm. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm curious sort of, you know, what you think were the biggest challenges that you faced, specifically because you are a woman, Right, um, and 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 I wonder how you think those are different today, if at all, for a woman starting a business in twenty twenty one. In twenty twenty one, I should I should actually ask you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think um, I think it's a lot easier today. Mm. Um, to be honest, w would I say I felt it at the time I started? Maybe I did not feel the gender. Mm aspect of it i was just focused on my vision yeah and i ran with it without looking left and right yeah um i did a business plan like any other business plan would be sitting on the table of the person mm -hmm. reviewing it mm -hmm. not not caring whether this is a business plan <laughs> of a no company matter, yeah. founded by a woman or is a business yeah. plan it's does this business yeah is it viable yeah okay um and so that, that's the sort of mindset you I to. had all, all along. And, and, and I think that's kind of helped me, that's you good. know, rather than think of, oh, I'm, sure. I'm different from every other person. Yeah. Um, but you are right that as, as I grew in my entrepreneurial journey mm -hmm. and, and as the company, you know, grew from one level to the other, I realized that the, the gen gender bits mm. came out a little bit because mm. you, you go for meetings, whether it's in France or wherever it mm. is, and you're actually the only woman there, mm. you know? So, mm. I mean, it, it was like, oh, wow, what, what's, yeah. what's going on here, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and you really don't want to be seen as a man because you are a woman, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. um, but I, 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 the gender thing to me was, um, I, I played on its benefits. Okay. You know. Tell me more about um, that when you say it. When you say more, that. more of its benefit is you no, know, just more intuitive in the way mm. you think. Um, a lot more emotional intelligence. Mm. Um, a lot more able to multitask because that's the makeup of a woman. Mm. Um, being able to handle a lot of things yeah. at the same time, and still able to um, see through. Yeah. You know. Um, not giving up at the slightest um, obstacle, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so to me, I, I played on the benefits of that. 
as opposed to looking at the yeah. the other aspect of it. But I would say in 1998, start, starting the business was, I mean, moving from a corporate corporate environment yeah. to an entrepreneurial environment was just seamless mm. for me. Mm. I remember when I was in banking, banking in those days, you have your name tag yeah. on your desk. Yeah. You know, when I started my company, I still had my name tag yeah. on my desk, you know, wow. so that's sort of thing. So, sure. so, and that helped, you know, yeah. um, it helped me to start my entrepreneurial journey yeah. on a good structure. Got it. You know, so if a staff is coming to my office and say, we have to do this, I'm like, can you not put it in a memo? Mm. You know, because that is the way that you have been yeah. trained, you know, so. So you um, took the training from, from, from your work experience yeah. into your first company. Yes. And, and, and on, I'd, I'd imagine. Fantastic. And now, it was very easy to yeah. separate yourself from the entity. So the company ah, was okay. one entity yeah. and you were another entity. And that's the way that's you know, really I important because I think a lot it. of people that start businesses in Nigeria don't necessarily do that. Yeah. It's it's all one one thing. So before you started that business, this you know, I understand, you know, you had this period and you were really disciplined about looking for what it was that you would do. Mm. Now, I understand that, you know, um, it was in speaking to a mentor that he mentioned the idea of biometric technology. technology yeah. Do you remember who that was? Like yeah. who that mentor was and where you were? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you just imagine what your life would have been if you didn't <laughs> take the step to go research and figure this thing out? Right. I, I, because I, I was sitting there thinking, you know, you literally you got this idea, you researched it and you saw a conference in DC and you said, honey, I'm going to DC. Right. I'd be like, for what? <laughs> like, <laughs> where are you going to do? You yeah. know. So tell us, like, I mean, what would what would your life have been? What would you be doing right now if you didn't take that step? I don't even want to think about <laughs> it. <laughs> all, yeah. all I know is that I, I like to do things that I enjoy doing. Sure. And one thing I know I enjoy doing is I enjoy succeeding. Mm. I enjoy making a difference, mm. um, um, creating value. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, knowing that what you're doing is creating some kind of value yeah, yeah. for a problem that was there. Yeah. That's problem that, solving. Uh, yes, yeah, problem solving. So that, that makes me happy. Oh, probably, back to, yes. the, back to <laughs> mathematics. It's all yeah, mathematics. It's There's all about there. that, like, yeah. Um, no, that's, that, that's really cool. I mean, I think, um, you know, the, the other thing that I, I was thinking about you when, you know, so one is you, you took that step, you overcome many fears and, you know, um, and you got people to follow you. And, you know, how do you get people to follow you? Like, what's your theory, if you have a specific theory around leadership and around yeah. leading people? Like, what's the, yeah. What, is there an overarching sort of theory you lean to around that? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I always say an idea is like a dream. Mm. And, um, the way I always look at the value chain is from vision to execution. Okay. Right? And a dream only becomes a vision when you throw some action okay. on the dream. Otherwise, you've just slept and woken up and sure. had a very nice, love the dream. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. You know? But when, when it's driven with some action behind yeah. it, yeah. then it becomes a vision. Yeah. And then from the vision, it goes into building the business strategy, the plan, mm -hmm. you know, what, how much financing do I have to raise mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. Then you get that right. The next stage, which is the more difficult one, is aligning people to your vision. Yeah. Okay. Making them to buy into the vision mm -hmm. that you have. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and that is something I've done. Mm -hmm. And... Um, um, Thank God. Don't, yeah. don't, don't How do well. you do that? Like, what, what, what would you say are the key, key things that have well, helped you be successful in doing that? Like, in first of all, get it again. That is probably where the gender bit comes mm, or being, okay. being, being a woman comes in. You mentioned but, emotional intelligence yes, before. Yes, and yeah. being able to get people to buy into the vision, not just working for you or yeah. working with you, yeah, but you know, buying into that vision yeah. and working with you, yeah, to achieve that vision. Yeah. You know, and I think in doing that, what you create uh, and what we've created here is yeah. 
a sense of pride. Mm. You know, when I take people around the factory or people, yeah. you can see the staff, they are very proud of what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. Because the way that they were aligned to it yeah. was not, oh, no, you're coming to work for us. You're coming. No, 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 no. It's, look, this doesn't exist. And we're doing yeah. it for the first time. We're in it together. Yeah. This is where we're going. And yeah. so, but helping them to see the end. Sure. And that's why it's important to start with the end in mind. Mm. If you start with the end in mind, then you can pass on, you can communicate that end to them. Sure. And once they can see the picture of the end, yeah. then it's very easy for them to align. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, like, I, um, you know, when I moved back to Nigeria, um, one of the first things, somehow I, I heard of your company um, and I remember um, reaching out to someone here and I came to visit the facility and I was just blown away. <laughs> um, and, and I didn't know you, but, but I was just personally interested. I took a whole day off and I came yeah. here. Um, and this is a world-class facility that you mm -hmm. have built um, and significant impact on all of us. I mean, almost every Nigerian who's banked is carrying yeah. something from Secure ID. Anyone who's using a mobile phone yeah. is carrying something from Secure ID, and that must make you incredibly proud. Like, yeah. you know, um, and they don't know who you are, but like, you know, yeah. but, but they're using your product. Which is good. You're they don't need to solution. know. <laughs> I, I love it. Um, what, tell us a little bit about just the challenge of having, like, you know, how do you build a world-class facility and maintain that yeah. in, in, in Nigeria? Um, first of all, um, in Nigeria then, yeah. it was resilience. In Nigeria now, it's even greater resilience. Greater resilience. Yes, but, but um, I think in, um, in saying to yourself that why not mm. in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, because I, I would say that that was the underlying... Mm. Um, sure. You know, I, I saw the gap, Yeah. you know, and I said to myself, why not? Yeah. Why? Yeah. And then you talk to people that are like, no, it can't be done. Why? Mm. You know, and then you look at other companies and they've never been able to do it. And you're asking yourself, why? Yeah. So, it's, so it's a question, why, why yeah. not? Why not in they, Nigeria? What is it that, they, you know, what is it that they're doing well, somewhere else? What is it they're doing do? somewhere, that, yeah, somewhere else yeah. that they can do here? And I, I, th I think that that's, that's what drives, um, that's what yeah. drove me into doing it. So Kofo, I've had the pleasure of visiting Secure ID. Mm. Um, actually, I did it like soon after I moved back to Nigeria oh. in probably 2009-ish, 2010. Um, and it's a world-class facility. So my, my big question is, how have you been able to build this kind of a world-class facility here in Nigeria? Almost everyone who's banked or anyone with a cell phone is using your products. Mm. And that must be incredibly proud for you. <laughs> well, um, the how, the how is a journey. Sure. Okay. And um, our story has always been... Uh, um, constant generation of ideas, mm -hmm. um, spotting agencies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we started, I started with the end in mind. Yeah. Oh, I want to build a world-class smart card manufacturing plant that can do this, 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 and this. Mm. But day one can't do it. Sure. So start a little bit, see the success, learn from the errors, then backward integrate, mm. succeed again, yeah. see the success, learn from the errors yeah. or the mistakes and then backward integrate and backward integrate. And every step of it has been with the alignment of people, mm. you know. And don't forget that when we started here, there wasn't any other plant to benchmark. Interesting, yeah. Not, yeah. not in Nigeria, sure. not in Sub-Sahara Africa, mm. you know. So um, my benchmark was the global first, yeah. somewhere in Europe, yeah. you know, and, and that was it. And mm. I asked myself, why not? Sure. Why can't we do it? Oh, it's yeah. not possible. Why not? Mm. You know, and we we task ourselves with getting global certifications yeah. that will make us and compel us to do whatever mm. we're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, comp um, complying with global sure. standards. Yeah. You know, and it 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 it, it, was, it was good, and you know, having the people go through this yeah. with us was was a fantastic journey the sense of pride as i've discussed was there and uh um, together as a team we were able to um to achieve that world class i think we're also used to that standard that we do not want to 
bend down or go mm. down on our standards, no Got matter it. what is happening around. Regardless of Nigeria. Regardless of Nigeria. Yeah. The thing was to build something that could be anywhere in the world. Yeah. You know, you, ju you just have to pick a plant from Germany and yeah. drop it here, or pick sure. a plant in Nigeria and drop it somewhere, yeah. you know. It shouldn't be different, sure. you know. And um, so that that was a whole um, mindset. Cool. And luckily, everybody else shared, shared the same mindset. No, that, that's, that's awesome. And one, one, one last question for you. Um, I'm curious how you think about legacy. What would you, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, I, I, I think it's a journey that has started, but I would like it to continue. And mm -hmm. one is same problems and being able to solve it, the, mm. most, the most difficult ones. Yeah. Um, the other is um, um, doing it at such high standards. Yeah. You know, and not settling down for anything, yeah. you know, so sort of substandard. Um, and then, you know, creating an environment that is so um, innovation friendly, mm. such that whatever ideas come yeah. is able to thrive in yeah. that environment, yeah. you know. And of course, building a company that can absorb shocks, mm. you know, um, it's something that we would like to continue. Tell me more about the absorb shocks. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I sort of, <laughs> I got, I got, I got the I knew, I knew, I knew you would ask that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, as I said, it's not just about starting a company. Yeah. You know, every idea has a lifespan. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, um, but building a company that can absorb whatever shock comes. I mean, mm. when COVID came last yeah. year, did anybody even sure. plan, yeah. you know, anticipate that yeah. there will be some virus sure. called COVID? Sure. Um, did anybody, was there, a, was you, could you anticipate that mm. the entire world would be on, you know, compulsory public holidays? Yeah. <laughs> Staying at home, Very lockdowns, you know, your factory true. not running. Yeah. Um, did you anticipate that supply chains would be mm. very difficult? Yeah. Did you anticipate that you know purchasing power would be on the decline, mm. foreign mm. exchange, and so on mm. and so forth? So you can't. So you need to build a company. And yeah. and how do you do that? It's one is diversification. Mm. You know, I talked about sports and agencies. Yeah. Okay, so we started. Oh, we can make. Bank card. Yeah. But what else can the production line make? Mm. Oh, SIM cards. Yeah. It can make SIM cards. Oh, but what else can it make? Yeah. Oh, there's a need here. Yeah. It can make public, you know, sort of high security ID cards, whether yeah. we're talking about driver's license yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know, and then it goes on. Oh, what else can yeah. can it make? Oh, we can we can do e-ticketing for transport. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so you're well diversified. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And that is a way of building a company that can absorb shocks. Mm. I'll, I'll give you an instance. We make SIM cards. Yeah. And at the beginning of the year 2021, yeah. you know, um, for security reasons, the government tells the telco no more SIM cards. No more SIM cards. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. And you ask yourself, wow, what yeah. do we do? But that's yeah. what we do. Yeah. You know, but because you're so well diversified. Not all you're able to absorb yeah. those shocks that come in. And you know, that comes in from being <clears throat> always proactive. Yeah. So I, I understand the concept of being diversified and how that helps you absorb different shocks. But talking to our audience today, um, you know, how do you, what would you suggest to people who have multiple ideas of what they could do in the same business, just so, you know, and how should they go about it? One is I, I believe in baby steps mm -hmm. and um, do one thing after the other and yeah. do it very well. Got it. Don't forget that, um, you know, if you have a mindset that you want to create value, you know, I always ask young entrepreneurs, why are you in business? Mm. You know, it's not just about making money or making yeah. profit. It's very good. Mm -hmm. But what value are you creating? Yeah. That's very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're driven by value, yeah. you know, it actually helps with the execution, yeah. you know. But um, having different ideas, please yeah. be well diversified. Because the way the world is, you just don't know very true. Where, where, where it's coming at. Continually disrupt yourself. Yeah. Disrupt your ideas. Yeah. You know, I remember, you know, two years ago, we started a sister company, SID mm. Digital. Mm. And 
the head of the company came to me and said, what do you want me to do? I said, I want you to disrupt me. Mm. Anything that we do, disrupt. Yeah. yeah. Find a better way of doing it, yeah. you know, and they are doing yeah. that, you That's know, awesome. you know, but always That's ask awesome. yourself, you know, this idea has mm. a lifespan. Mm. Somebody new is going to come and say, yeah. how can I do what they are doing yeah. better, yeah. cheaper, yeah. faster, yeah. you know, and so always innovate. Yeah. You're constantly yeah. generating ideas. This is great. You're reminding me of uh, something one of my former professors, Andy Grove, um, who was the former CEO of Intel, um, oh. you said, and I think it's the title of his book, where he always harped on it in class, only the paranoid survive. And, mm -hmm. and the thesis behind that really is that, is what you just described, is that in any business, you need to disrupt yourself. Yeah. And you need to always be paying attention to what the competitive landscape is doing and mm -hmm. play the chess match. Mm -hmm and say someone's gonna try and disrupt you, so mm. you need to. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I love it. Um, this has been fantastic. I've, I've, I've learned a lot sitting here, and, and, like, um, and I want to thank you, Kofo, for all you do, um, because you are, and I really mean, you're having a lot of impact on society, um, and you've already built a great legacy, and I have, <laughs> I have no doubt about the future, and I wish you nothing but uh, great success. Thank ongoing. you very much, Tayo. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So this has been an amazing interview, honestly. Um, amazing in the sense that I mean, you 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 did a lot of homework. And <laughs> no, I like I said, I I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of yours. And yeah. So I've uh, I've been watching, um, and I happen to also be very shortly a customer of yours. So, <laughs> so I'm also yeah. I'm I'm also very excited yes. just to see what has been built and, yeah. and and what you've done and how your journey and how you came through because, you know. I know how hard it is yeah. uh, being an entrepreneur in this market. Um, and then when I think about it, 1998, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> what did she go through? You know, so yes. I'm, I'm really glad yeah. that that came so out today. I, I, have, I have questions for you because okay. <laughs> um, you're a fan of mine. I'm a fan Thanks. of yours. And I think you're extremely relevant in mm. this time, mm. especially for the very, very young mm. entrepreneurs mm. that are sort of... Um, um, trying to find their fit in the digital space mm, as well. Sure. Um, I remember when Paga started, mm. I mean, it's been a journey. Yeah, sure. And you started when nobody knew what, you know, sort of yeah. money service. Yeah, um, the, the word FinTech didn't exist. No, no, it, it didn't even <laughs> exist. Yeah. And, you know, I remember that I used to see those signs on buses, mm -hmm. you know, on our, on sure. our local red yeah. buses. Yeah. And so now I was like, what is, what's this company doing? Sure. And not giving up year after year. Yeah. And, um, you know, they say that it's easier to get to the top, mm. but it's more difficult to sustain mm. in there. Mm. So how have you, first of all, just to talk about your entrepreneurial yeah. journey, how you yeah. got to the top and how you've remained being yeah. the um, leading money, so, uh, money service provider in Nigeria. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, I, you know, I think for me, the biggest thing is the people who've been around me, to be honest. Like, mm. um, from Jay, my co-founder, to Eric, our CTO, um, everyone on my leadership team, like literally uh, all of them to a person mm -hmm. um, are really bought in on what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, all our investors are really bought in on what we're trying to do, which is how do we make it simple for people to pay, get paid and access mm -hmm. financial services, right? Um, and I think that vision um, has helped us every step of the way, mm. keep going, right? Yeah. Keep going. Um, and to, and we've learned to be super disciplined about how we manage our resources mm. and how we make more with less, right? Uh, um, and really accomplish a lot. Um, so, you know, where, and uh, you know, I think I, something you said about um, when we were talking about, you know, being um, having multiple things so that you are, you absorb any shock. Mm. And it's a journey to do that because we're building an ecosystem and there are multiple parts to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually finding that that is a big competitive advantage mm -hmm. that we have as a business because yes, in one part of our business, we have a couple of people who are trying to compete, mm -hmm. but you know what? They don't do all the other things, yeah. right? And so the people who are even in that part of the business that are competing, we see value in us over them. So that, you know, like, so that becomes interesting, right? Um, and, and so building that out and I think having the long view of what we're trying to achieve has been what has really helped us. Um, we turned 10, I think, two years ago, and 
and we had a wonderful week of you know events with our team oh. etc but one thing that really <clears throat> stood out to me um was you know after we had our um you know we had a like a banquet ceremony um and when we're leaving my wife said to me she said Ty, all your major investors came for this event mm. the biggest one of them our largest in, in, institutional investor literally flew in arrived lagos at oh, 6 wow. p.m went straight to the event after that event went right back to the airport oh wow came in just for that event and said he could not miss it um and and she said you know that's a testament of the relationships mm. and the way you've managed the relationships not just with your team but also with your investors mm. and your board um and so we're really proud of that because it really you know there's a quote that i love um it's that if you want to go fast go alone yeah if you want to go far go together and i feel like that's what paga embodies is yeah. that um and in fact it's in our logo <laughs> the reason why our logo is a circle mm. is actually because we're a community and there are multiple there are multiple colors multiple sizes because it's everybody comes with different different aspects yeah. and so um, so that's a big part of oh, wow. sort of what has helped us. I mean, because, you know, just looking at you and reading about you, you know, I, I saw a lot of similarities, mm. you know, at the, at the time you came, what you were doing was sort yeah. of, the, no, no, but not too many people understood it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How do we use mobile phones yeah. to, you know, to make payments? No, people thought I was, and, everybody thought I was crazy. Know. I mean, when, um, you know, the most shocking um, experience I had actually early days was when there were about eight of us in the company, we sat together to refine and define our mission and vision. Mm. We already had something that I came up with. Mm. And I remember the vision was cashless society. That was it, oh. a cashless society. And to my surprise, the seven other people who had a facilitator, the seven other people in the room were scared by that idea. <laughs> and they were like, what is this cashless society? And I was like, wait, are you, are you kidding? <laughs> like, we well, all have quit your jobs yeah. <laughs> to come with me on this journey. <laughs> And I told you cashless society when I was talking to you about it. Yeah. They were like, yeah, but cash can go away now. Like physical, I'm like, no, no, no. I'm in a world where physical cash does not exist. Now you have to remember there was no Bitcoin. Mm. There was no cryptocurrency. Yeah. You know, so people did think I was actually like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, no. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, but I think it was showing people. Yeah. So, for example, one of the first things we did actually was we built this beautiful BlackBerry app. Right, that was a demo, and so I was able to. And this is the days of BlackBerry. Mm. Show people this thing work. You know, it was all mucked up. Yeah, we never actually built it in live. Mm. Right, the BlackBerry was almost dead by then. I <laughs> think so. We never even did it, but it gave people the concept. Oh wow, okay, I could have an app where I link all my financial sources, my bank accounts, my cards. Mm. and use that app for everything I do. And for the millions that are not banked, mm. this could be my way to access financial service. Or I could do it through a neighborhood store, right? And so I think people started cluing mm. in a little bit on the idea. I, I really like that because, I mean, for people listening to us, mm. it means that, you know, don't be afraid. Even if your idea, sometimes your idea could be ahead of the time. Yes. But stay with it. Yes. You know, it will, it Absolutely. will come. Absolutely. It, stay with it, yeah. it will come. You know? And there were, there were good parts of what we, I mean, one big part of what we did was very ahead of its time, right? Mm. It, you know, so for example, we learned, so we launched in 2012, <clears throat> and we learned very quickly that actually the consumer direct side of our business of people downloading an app mm. um, to use Paga was well ahead of its time. Mm. Uh, for a few reasons, right? Smartphone penetration was super low in 20, 2012, right? It's still low now, 2012. Um, two, there was no digital form of identification yeah. in Nigeria. So there was no way to KYC people. Like, that's why banks needed banking halls. Um, and you realize that those were things that had to be solved mm -hmm. before we could try to get people to use Paga by themselves. Yeah. So we leaned in on the agent network. Right, and building out this retail distribution because that is where the mass market would would use the service. Mm. And so that's going very well. And then 2019, when all those things changed, we now started pushing the consumer direct. Mm. And the growth has just been phenomenal since then, wow. right? We now have over three and a half million wallets mm. um, and very active users, strong that's retention. So, it, you know, so that was something where 
yeah. it was well ahead of its time. So I remember in 2014 when we decided, don't invest in that <laughs> now. That was a big decision then, but it was the right decision. Wow. Right, yeah. Um, I mean, I would love to ask you about your other markets because <laughs> I know that you, you just didn't focus on Nigeria, sure. but you focused on that. But let's go straight to disruption. What are your mm. thoughts of um, disrupting yourself for, yeah. the for the future? Yeah, no, this is something that we, we think very, very much about. And, and first of all, just thinking, what is the future of money, right? Mm. And how does money flow? Um, and then what do we need and how do we play and where do we be? Um, I think for us, um, it's very clear that cryptocurrency is the future. Mm. Um, and I'm per I personally really believe Bitcoin could be the currency of the internet. Um, and the ubiquity, the fact that, you know, it's decentralized 100%. Um, I think governments will have their own, their own digital currencies, like the e-Naira that's coming out. So for us, disrupting ourselves, we're always, I'm an engineer by training, so I say mm. there's no um there's no perfect solution so you all you can always innovate and you can always figure it out um and so we are always thinking about what's that next thing and mm. with the way we talk about in the companies we have the business of today and we have to focus on executing the business of today but we have the business of tomorrow so some of us have to be thinking of the business of tomorrow like where does this thing go yeah. tomorrow yeah. and there are parts of our business that i see in the next 10 years will not exist yeah. right and we will be a very different company um, we, uh, we just got our banking license. That's going to make us a very different company. Um, so there are a lot of things that we're, that we've been doing that, um, will, will shift, but I think that foundation and the infrastructure we've built, will keep building on top of it. Right. Um, and keep innovating. Oh, well, fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. It's been lovely having this conversation. Likewise. <laughs> uh, thank you for taking the time and, yeah. um, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you Cheers. Thank you for listening to this episode of Journeys in Entrepreneurship. This interview was recorded on the 16th of October 2021 at the Secure ID Head Office in Lagos. We look forward to hearing about your haha moment in the comment section below and invite you to join us next week Friday for a new episode.